Uh, my name is Irina Orlandini, and I'm an expert on international marketing and business development in the restaurant um, industry. Um, formerly having worked for TJ Fridays, Costa Coffee, and Papa John's, and currently running my own consultancy since almost 10 years ago. And I'm also a book writer, and here's my book, The Battle for the Gas, on restaurant marketing. And I'm very honored to welcome on stage the panelists of this session, Manuel Wazen, Marketing Director Black Spoon, a group behind some of your favorite brands from Aloe Beirut, Masti, and Ibn Al Bar. Please welcome Manuel. Zayed, Zayed Al Hamaki, Cluster Head of Operations for UAE, Oman, and Kuwait at Tim Hortons. Welcome, Zayed. Sailesh uh, Malotra, General Manager DCC at JDA, a fintech company and a POS solution and a sponsor of this session. Welcome. And Tapan Waida, my ex-colleague from Papa John's, uh, CEO of PJP Investments Group. Welcome, Tapan. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So uh, in this session, our goal is to be as specific as possible and to discuss practical ideas on how to implement uh, technology and what are the technologies of the future to look at. And uh, the first question, I guess, is um, can you recall what was the momentum when you realized that the tech is a must, when you realized that this is the thing to go with? And if you let me, I can start with my momentum. It was 13 years ago when I launched uh, online ordering for Papa John's in one of the markets. And it was quite awkward. It wasn't perfect at all. It had a lot of mistakes. It had a lot of gaps. But, and yeah, we were a little bit of shame of, ashamed of it. But after just a couple of months, it reached 20% of the sales. So my takeaway from this learning from 13 years ago is that you don't have to wait until tech is perfect because when it's perfect, it might be already too late. So this is my learning and Tepan, what is your, your momentum when you realize there's no way back? So tech has always played a part in the restaurant industry. So my first brush with the tech was when we were using calculators to basically arrive at how much the order would cost and the cashier will do that and that's how it started. Then came uh, Casio cash registers. But even those cash registers actually generated some degree of MIS. It generated, it used to generate hourly sales, it used to give daily sales, buy shift and so on and so forth. And then POS came and then the KDS, and so on and on. But see the thing, and now we are in the AI world, and it's just never ending. It's just going to continue and continue. Thank you. Thank you, Tupan. And Salesh, do you have anything to add? Um, I think one thing I would like to add is that in our industry, tech has always played a very major role, uh, meaning in payments, you don't have the option to default. So tech has always been a major role. I think what has been the great tipping point for us is when we look at the evolution that is happening in the marketplace, whether it's in the F&B industry or retail or uh, even in the online space. And uh, we realized it very fast that if we have to be a success leader, then tech has to be on our side and we have to enable payments and the F&B solutions that we have and at GDA, we realized this long time ago that we not only have to accept the technology, but we have to be the creators of that technology and use it to create solutions that matter the most uh, to our industry players, to our industry partners, and so on. So I think we learned it long time ago, and we created those POS devices, POS solutions, embedded payments, ECR solutions uh, to create that one unified experience. Wonderful, yeah, that. And um, they say AI is a new big thing. So, um, does anybody of you actually using AI solutions um, in your business, Syed? Uh, uh, we just reused the IA uh, solution just recently in how to mapping 
the menu for us in, 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 in our uh, coffee industry. It simply is that they give you the first minute the customer enter to your stores and the first 30% uh, percent from the first minutes, how he look to the menu in which exactly uh, positioning in the menu, then the second 25, then so on. Then after this analysis, you're gonna take it and then you build your menu design base of that. Whatever is the items that you need the customer, his eye to catch once he enter to the store, you're gonna positioning in that location. Whatever the items that it's generate traffic for you, but less in profitability, you can add it in the last position of customer eye catch it and so on. And I think this is one of the amazing tools that we use it and we already feel the result of that tool. Yeah, um, this is this is really amazing because this is basically menu engineering automated. Exactly. This is the first time I'm hearing about this kind of technology. But um, are there any um, are there any um, um, results that you could share? Uh, uh, a result you can share that the result that I can say to you that's uh, whatever the items that we position in, in in that locations, we have incremental sales in that specific items which is almost one one point five percent yeah which is which is one point five percent in our food and beverage industry quite, it's not easy to catch up quite a bit quite a bit so in fact it helps you raise the uh, the average ticket and increase profitability a hundred percent fantastic and to pan nine oh yeah we have some really interesting use uh, <coughs> of uh, artificial intelligence we use a tool where we upload video feeds from all our CCTV cameras. It goes to this provider. Um, they have this wonderful, if not magical tool, which analyzes all the feed, the video that they receive, and then they come back with uh, results to us. What kind of results? If an employee has not washed hands and started touching food, then that video with evidence will tell us. If um, an employee has dropped something on the floor and not cleaned the floor, we'll come to know. This tool also gives us other stats like how many children came to the restaurant yesterday or how many male, female. Um, it, I mean, once it was really funny. Once uh, the result included that our team members had a fight. So we, we watched the whole thing again and again, and then we realized that what this tool had identified was actually someone's birthday celebration. People were dancing, but the AI tool thought it was a fight. But So this happens with AI, but the thing is, it gives us such tremendously helpful data that uh, we are a big fan of this uh, tool. Yeah, fantastic. Is it based on uh, a computer vision? It is, yeah. yes. Okay. And then uh, is it analyzed automatically or anyone actually checking back with it? Oh, no. It's analyzed automatically by the tool and then they, the tool comes back with a trailer, if you like, okay. of the key uh, points. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I mean, at this point, it is this, but uh, the future is unlimited. The possibilities are unlimited. Yeah, we're going to talk about the future in the next uh, several questions, over the next several questions. Um, uh, what has, um, Manuel, what was the technology that has brought most of the value for your business and for your clients? Uh, sure. Uh, so we introduced recently several kinds of uh, technology inside our operations. One of them was internal, which is for our central kitchen and operations, which is an automated checklist software. So now all our teams can see their daily checklists and make sure that everything is being done and it's being monitored at the same time. So this saved us a lot on terms of time and definitely money. Time is money, of course. Uh, the second one, which we also recently introduced, is Club, which is a QR payment uh, tool that is available inside the stores and people can, uh, customers can pay directly using this QR code. So this helped us actually in two ways. First of all, uh, customers have less wait time when they're ordering the check and they can also split the bill, which is helping us and helping them as well, like in terms of splitting the bill very easily. The second is internal, which is uh, something that we noticed and we realized that 
uh, the tip amount for our waiters increased by 30% actually after we introduced this uh, 30%. Sir, 30%, yes. So now everyone is happy, customers are happy, waiters are happy, and you see them like uh, they are more uh, enjoying their, their work now with the increase in tips. Oh, fantastic, great results. And Sailors, do you have any cases where your technology has actually brought a lot of value to your, to your customer database? Truckloads, <laughs> truckloads, meaning we, we can't manage with our technology, especially in our industry. I think uh, to give um, a specific use cases where we, uh, we have derived the maximum amount of value, that has been the integration of payments mm -hmm. with the POS solutions that the restaurants use, right? That has always been a demand, it's always been an ask, and what we have done at our end is revolutionize the POS machine from a standard billing thing, which you know, which keys in the menu and sends the order back to the uh, to the kitchen to take it a step forward to now only accept payments, bring more intelligence, um, and we have been able to resolve solutions or provide solutions like food wastage, um, you know, um, the data analytics around how much was the food consumed, what were the order types like. Uh, how many orders were on cash, how many orders were on card, how many came from dine-in, how many came from takeaways, how many came in from, um, uh, you know, um, you know uh, your, your talabats uh, of the likes, um, and mixed that analytics and brought in the demographic angle to it, which was able to show where did your customers come from? Were they international customers, were they local customers, were they uh, uses of debit cards or prepaid cards or commercial cards or international cards. So that kind of an analytics has been built around it to create a very holistic solution that when a restaurant owner is looking at his uh, at his statement at the end of the day and he looks at his dashboard, he knows exactly where his business came from, how much business did he do, what was the type of the business and what are some of the things that he can leverage the data to improvise. Yeah. So, you know, I was hearing the previous panelists talk about food wastage and all that. A lot of them have been able to resolve this to a great extent. Um, and I think technology, especially in the FNB, today has evolved a lot. Then you have those self service kiosk, you go punch in, and then you use a payment device. Payment device is so underrated, right? Uh, it's just, you know, tap your card and go, and then it's done. But fact of the matter is the information that comes from there, if that can be embedded and used along with the information that your uh, your your ECRs and your customer base is generating, that's priceless. So that, I think technology has played a key role. Yeah, that's a great point you just uh, made, Salish, because a lot of the operators have this access to the data, have these blueprints of, of their sales and customer base, but not really using it. Correct. How many do you think of your customers are actually using the data? So now that uh, when we came into the FNB industry along with our POS solution, we started creating smart dashboards. And to be honest, the restaurant owners have 50 problems to deal with. The last thing they want to look at is as a payment report. But when these dashboards have started producing smart results out of it, they know exactly what's going on. And therefore, we see a greater demand coming from the FNB for our solutions because now everybody is asking for, you know, embedded payments. Now uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, Dubai Expo as a great example where they used our solution for their Ramadan Feast Festival, a 14-day event, a 30-day event, and they loved it. They said we have only one device creates the reports we want, which restaurant generated how much and to manage a large event of 60, 65 restaurants, it gave them a lot of insights. Now, when they are doing the COP28, which, which has close to 70 restaurants participating, we were the provider of choice. And we are providing them with all the reports around the payments, around which restaurant, what kind of food, how much did it happen, how much was cash, how much was this, but along with the ECR insights, yeah, right? A small example, right? Uh, a very small example. How many people ordered the food and uh, requested for the tomatoes to be removed? It's like, really? Yeah. Do people bother? Yeah, people bother. Because the restaurants can then do food savings in when planning for their inventory. And you know, there are hundreds and hundreds of examples like these which are now helping the industry 
uh, use data. So I would say amongst the people who use my solution, 80% of them are relying on the data and the smart reports that we are giving to them. Yeah, that's fantastic. Sorry, long answer. That's, that's a great result, you know, not everybody is on point with this. And um, moving forward to the operational uh, operational metrics and uh, operational excellence, uh, Said, in your, in your experience, what were the tech advancements that brought most to your operational excellence? Um, the, the operation excellence technology that helped you to, uh, to drive your business in, in, in uh, a lot of way, which is, I usually divide it in the four columns, which is people, customer, and sales and profit. So technology in terms of, of people here, when we shift, usually back end when we used to have the, the, the training manually and print all the data and all of that stuff, and suddenly came the e-learning uh, system that you just uploading all the training system materials that you have, the development session that the team need to do it, and then hope, the, so, so just a couple of minutes, the team log in from any place and just complete their uh, uh, exam or complete their development plan and take their career path. In, in, in terms of customer, when you back, back end, when you used to have like maybe, let's say take it, the home delivery as an example, because home delivery takes like, maybe it started from 15% up to 60 and 70% from some of the industry in food and beverage. So use back end, you have like maybe uh, one phone lines and uh, uh, one order takers and customer waiting for almost 20 minutes to make their orders then uh, technology come and you can add in the same one uh, numbers like maybe eight or seven numbers and then you have order taker then you shift to the call center and then now you end up with the application you just when you drive you make your orders you set up the time when the when you need it to be delivered and then at the end you, some of the technology are working now just only by voice it's yeah. under development you just drive from where i just uh, i request i need one medium latte to be uh, send it to my office. That's yeah. it. In this time, some technology, some people are working in that development to be uh, to be there. Are you looking to introduce any voice recognition technology in your business, or doing any tests on no. it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Listen, technology is is thing, always something ongoing. In the minutes uh, we stop talking, and they are years back. So technology and te technology is almost something ongoing. Thinking how you gonna use technology to enhance the, 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 the food industry or to enhance your business, it's something you should, you must thinking always ongoing. You never stop thinking in that. Yeah, so true. Um, Tapan, um, do you, uh, can you mention any technologies that have really helped your business to increase profitability and watch costs? Oh, sure. So. Um so many examples of using technology um, in the back office, in the kitchen, in the front. But let me talk about uh, what we do. See, we are a uh, uh, delivery-driven business where deliveries is everything. Uh, yeah, we love customers who come to dine in and we love customers who come for takeaway even more. But a large part of our business is delivery. And what do our customers want? They want the delivery fast. They want the pizza hot, but they want their food fast. So what we do is we track the time using technology in this fashion. We, the moment an order comes in, either from the POS or the website or the app or the aggregator, it comes into our POS, it straight away flies into the kitchen on a KDS where they start slapping the dough. Then once the dough is slapped, the dough is passed onto the make line, and the guy who slapped it tells the system, I'm done. The item then flies to the make line, where uh, another crew will top the pizza, sauce the pizza, top it, cheese it, put it in the oven, and tell the system at his station that I'm done. And then pizza comes out at the cut table where someone will cut the pizza, box it, and keep it uh, ready for the driver to take it and then finally driver will come and take the pizza and go and he will deliver and when he delivers he tells his app the pizza is delivered so now we know every at every point time stamps are collected so we know the average time taken uh, to slap the dough we know the average time taken to make uh, the pizza to bake the pizza is the same because the belt speed is the same 
And then we know the rack time, which I think is extremely important. How long does the pizza wait before the driver collects it? So our job is to always try and make sure we minimize each of these sections so that mm -hmm. finally customer gets a pizza before, say, a 30-minute uh, delivery time. So this is how we use technology. Yeah, the, um, when, when, you're, you're, when you're describing this example, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking about the next level. What would this be, like blockchaining the whole thing and making sure you can track the dough ball from which batch did it come from? Absolutely. Yeah? Oh, yes. Is it, is it the future? I mean, the future is AI and more AI. I think yeah. the future is, uh, see, generative AI is a phase. And it's going to become interactive AI very soon. You know, um, Bill Gates will, doesn't stop saying that it's going to be interactive bots helping all of us. Yeah. Um, and I think what's going to happen is uh, multi-modality is another trend in uh, AI where... I give you the example of the video that we now what will happen soon in the future is that AI tool will not only receive a uh, video, but it will also have an integration with our POS, mm -hmm. collect data on customers, transactions, value, and give a completely enhanced outcome as a result. And possibly so, voice recognition as well. Oh, yes. That yeah. Too. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and. Um, Moving towards the client side on the loyalty, uh, Manuel, do you believe um, every company in future needs a loyalty platform or, or the human touch is so essential? We're going to go back to the human interaction more? Uh, sure. Uh, definitely, loyalty is very important. However, I believe that it should be done in a very smart way and it should be coupled with uh, tech, AI, and data, of course. So uh, having, let's say, a uh, loyalty program that is backed by CRM, where not only like giving customers uh, order for 10 times and get, let's say, a 10% discount or an order for free. This has been done and it's very basic. I believe that uh, nowadays uh, loyalty should be based on each person, it should be personalized. It should be also more interactive than this. Uh, for example, uh, customers can be invited to certain events, Customers can be invited to tastings, for example, since let's say if you choose the top customers, top loyal customers, they can be part of a tasting session before you launch any new product, uh, whenever you have a new opening of a branch. So this kind of loyalty, um, I truly believe, should be the uh, future of, uh, of marketing and not only based on, on simple uh, tasks. And CRM also this is something that we are working on internally. We are now gathering data from every point that we can get data from. Uh, I know that not all aggregators share data with us. However, we're doing our best to get uh, data from uh, all other uh, touch points. And uh, we're doing this now so that we can create a loyalty program that is suitable for our customers and based on their needs and their uh, aspirations. Yeah. So. Uh, in other words, the, 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 um, the future is an even more personalization and customization? Definitely it Definitely. is. And, uh, I know that Salesh uh, would like to add on this. Oh, I absolutely agree with him. Uh, spot on. You know, traditionally, loyalty was all about reward, right? But now uh, loyalty has taken a very different dimension where it's moving from reward to recognition. Yeah. Where the customer wants recognition when he enters the door. And loyalty plays a very critical role, not in only just driving repeat spend, but also in improvisation of the products. So, for example, uh, speaking very, very FNB-like, if uh, if a certain customers prefer to their food to be served in a certain way and taste a certain way, uh, this aspect then also means that when you want to bring in food improvisation, uh, bring in a different kind of a flavor to it. It's your loyal set of customers which are going to say whether they liked it or not. And that's what keeps driving the greater push and pull into your restaurants. And same for uh, payments in GDR. We, we have been working on driving loyalty amongst our merchants for a very long time. And the only way we can do it is by giving them more products embedding their existing products with the newer technology and updating it we do not believe in replacement we believe in upgrades right and upgrades at a minimum or no cost because the moment you start taking cost for it 
then you've lost half your half your base away because then it becomes a cross sell or an upsell and that's not loyalty the loyalty is when the same set of customer keeps getting better product just because they are associated with you so you know i i'm a big fan of loyalty but loyalty not in just the form of reward but in form of recognition and in form of future enhancements yeah and um we have a few minutes left uh so a cu couple of uh, visionary futuristic questions to you if you had um if you had an idea of a fantastic magical tool of the future that would dramatically increase your kpis what would this be okay and anyway, so, say it uh, your dream uh, yeah i can share with you something that's that's what i dream of it because in in any industry people is is the greatest assets to for any industry the, not food industry any industry the people is is your greatest asset so uh, i dream of technology that can and give me indications of how the morale of my team member in the floor is it and and notified me once this morale is down <laughs> so and give me the advice how can i quick inter interaction with them to increase that morale again this is what i'm doing well, it's, it's something <laughs> From other world, but anything is possible never, technically yeah, nowadays. You never know. <laughs> yeah. I think I have something that every uh, person in marketing dreams of, which is maybe like a magical tool that can give you instant ROI for everything, every marketing campaign. ROI. Something maybe like, like yeah. brand awareness <laughs> campaign even can be uh, like can get the ROI of uh, brand awareness of everything and instantly, so that you know how to react and what to do next. In your yeah. campaigns this is very important this is the us. pain of every market here yeah. it's so much so much manual work um japan yeah so i believe that uh, tech must add value to the business tech must uh, drive efficiencies otherwise it's there's no point going for any sort of tech but what i am currently testing is robotics so uh, you know during peak times you need to turn out pizzas faster and uh, so to reduce sourcing time and enhance the taste of a pizza so what happens is today we source the pizza using a ladle and so it is almost never 100 percent consistent throughout the pizza and so the bite integrity in every bite the sauce is a little different and that's not good so we are looking at a machine that essentially sauces the pizza for you and this machine can do 350 pizzas in an hour yeah, that's wow. like and and so we are testing it it's working well and if that really uh, gives us good results for a period of one month of test i think we're going to roll with it in all our restaurants well fantastic what do you think about robots in the kitchen Huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> From our side, no, definitely not for our kind of food. Yeah. No, so keep it human. Yeah, 100%. I have, a, I have a fantastic example from uh, UK. There's a brand called Itsu, uh, which is a Japanese, uh, Japanese kitchen. And uh, the brand is in incredibly tech. All the ordering, everything, they have no staff on the floor, n nobody. You only order through the uh, app or, or the kiosks but they still keep their, their cooks human, 100% human. And this is how they're you know, positioning themselves. Very proud of having real food made by real people, but a lot of tech on the, on the front of the house. Could this be the future? Well, in your case, we know there's, 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 more, to, you know, there's more to explore, but this is fantastic, 300 pieces an hour. Yeah, I mean, see, artificial intelligence is one thing, you also need human intelligence. Yeah. And so, you know, a good blend is always a winner. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. And we have uh, time for just one question from the audience. No time. Okay. Then thank you, dear panelists. Tapan, Telesh, Sayed, Manuel. Thank you.